Hello, and welcome to another episode of Growing for Wholesale Standards. For today's episode, we're going to continue our conversation about USDA grading specifications, but we're going to move on to winter squash. And we're going to start off with butternut squash. Now, before I get into the exact USDA specifications, I just want to share some helpful tips, tricks, and reminders for growers to get as many quality number one product off of your property as possible in a little segment I like to call, Don't Forget To. Don't forget to test your soil, uh, rotate your crops, build your soil organic matter. Make sure you have enough nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in your soil. And make sure to check your soil pH. Uh, all fruits and vegetables have a pH tolerance level. So make sure that yours is at the right pH for squash. You may need to add something to balance it out. Don't forget to scout weekly, physically inspecting your plant stems, the top of the leaf, and the bottom of the leaf. What you're looking for are any pests like the cucumber beetle, the squash vine borer, and the squash bug. But you're also looking for any signs of disease such as fusarium, powdery, or downy mildew. Here you can see some uh, squash bugs that are on the top of a leaf plant. So don't forget to carry guides with you. I recommend carrying a disease guide a pest guide, and a beneficial insect guide. This will help identify for you whether you're looking at squash bug eggs or ladybug eggs. What you can see here is the Southeastern U.S. 2016 Vegetable Crop Handbook. I'll have that link below as well. Uh, that is a great resource for you guys. Click on that and you can download it, print it off. I also have here Insect Disease and Weed ID Guide. This is a very helpful book uh, to carry around with you and keep notes in. I will put the link uh, to where you can purchase this below as well. Don't forget to check your labels on whatever you're using as an input. The label is a law. Not all inputs are certified uh, for use by your distributor or your certifier. So just make sure whatever you're using uh, input-wise has been approved. Don't forget that disease can occur in the post-harvesting process. So if you're storing uh, your squash before it ends up going to market, make sure it's in a place that's well ventilated at the appropriate temperature. And if you're looking to store squash long term, check out the video below. It's all about how to build a uh, storage tunnel for hard squash. This thing is great. It's easy to make. It doesn't cost that much. You get all of the uh, tools and equipment that you need at your local home improvement store and it shouldn't take more than an hour to build and then you can store your squash uh, on a longer term. So check out that video below as well. Don't forget that your wholesale buyer has a very particular date in mind when they're buying the product off of you. Uh, so for butternut squash, work backwards. Uh, it takes about 110, 120 days for butternut squash to fully mature. Learn from your buyer when they expect to, to have that product from you and then just count 120 days back and that will give you uh, an idea of when to plant. Alrighty, so a fully matured butternut squash should have a diameter of 4.5 to 6.5 inches, should have a length between 8 to 13 inches, it should weigh between 2.5 to 5 pounds, should have a uniform light tan coloring, and should have a bulb shape at the bottom, but not so short it looks like a light bulb. Now here you can see the USDA number one grading specifications. Outlined here you can see a similar varietal characteristics. Uh, this means uniformity. So if you're looking at two perfect squash, they have no damage, they're fully well matured, but they don't have the same length and weight. These are both number ones, but they should be put into separate boxes because we're also grading by uniformity. Uh, a graded number one will also be well matured. So for butternut squash, green stripes at the top reflect an immaturity in the fruit. So just keep that in mind with well matured as a graded number one squash. Grade number one squash is also free from any breaks or cracks. It is free from any damage, any damage at all. We're talking scar damage, dry rot, freezing, dirt damage, disease, insect damage, mechanical, or any other means of damaging this product. This is the perfect looking squash that, that you have. Here you can see what the USDA outlined as a number two. And you can see the major difference comes down to fairly well matured. But this doesn't really give you a good idea of exactly 
what that would look like as a number two. And this chart is great. You can see uh, from left to right, we have seven squash, and the first three on the left are all perfect. This is exactly what we're talking about, the perfect looking squash. You can see now moving to that fourth squash, it is so tiny. It, that is the little light bulb that we were talking about earlier. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't have any disease, you know, it doesn't have any animal bite marks, but since it's completely off on the shape, the size, and the weight, uh, it will be a number two. But since there's no disease yet or animal bite mark, that's why it's not going to the pigs. All right, moving right along down that chart, you can see the next one to the right is big. So that meets our size and weight and shape standards, but there is a giant cut at that top part of the fruit. Uh, now, since that cut has healed over and it's not oozing or leaking, that would be a number two because that is a cosmetic damage. If that was an animal bite mark, that's not cosmetic damage. That's enough damage for it to be pig feet and not a number two. But since it looked like it was a singular cut that has healed over, that will be a number two. All right, moving down the line here, you can see that second from the right uh, is completely crooked. Uh, so this doesn't meet the shape, the size, or the weight. This would be a number two. And lastly, the one on the far right, that is scarring. So that is not major damage, but that's enough cosmetic damage for that squash to be a number two and not a number one. Okay, so we have a pretty good idea uh, what a number one would be. Uh, and then going over the chart, hopefully what a number two would be. So what would not be a number two? Well, here you can see this is soft rot uh, on the squash. This would disqualify it as a number two. Uh, we were looking earlier at a number two on that chart, and it had a similar cut. But that cut healed over. Uh, and this is still completely soft, which means it's rotting. The flesh is weakened. This is not a sound product. Uh, this will most this will degrade, and this would impact other squash if it was boxed up with them. Okay, here you can see animal bite marks. This would completely knock it out of a number two. As we were talking before on the chart, we're, we're looking at cosmetic damages or squash that doesn't meet shape, size, or weight. Uh, you know, now we're getting into animals biting the product. I, I mean, I wouldn't personally even bring this in my house. This is absolutely a compost, a cull, pig feed. This is not a number two uh, to be sent off to a food bank or even a wholesale buyer. We're looking at now decay. Uh, so all this squash was thrown into a container together, and this is this is physically decaying on top of each other. That is not good to eat. <laughs> that should not be sent somewhere for people to eat because uh, I wouldn't recommend you eating this yourself. Uh, so this is this is not a number two. This should not enter the marketplace. Uh, this is decay, just like bite marks and mold. You know, we're hitting disease and breakdown of the product. That needs to stay away uh, from the market. You can see another uh, disease setting in. This is black mold on the squash, black mold. Uh, that that should not be brought. I would not harvest that. All righty. So we have the USDA graded number one squash. This is literally the perfect squash. It is well matured. It hits a lot of those characteristics we talked about. Then we have a number two. These are cosmetic damages. This is minor damage to it. Anything worse than minor damage or it being only fairly matured, anything that's worse than that, there is no grade. There, that, that grade does not exist because it should not enter the market. That is that is pig feed. That is compost. All righty. So you think you have a good handle on what could be a number one, a number two, or what should go to the pigs? Well, let me test your knowledge right here. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. Um, I'll leave the picture up for a, a couple of seconds. Take your best guess, and then I'll let you know where it fell. I'm going to show you some pictures. Let me know. Take your guess. All righty. Is this a number one, a number two, or pig feed? You know, number one or two. 
that's a two. There's nothing that I see that's wet on it. It's more surface, but there's more surface area there than what I would think acceptable. One or two? Two. 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 Really? Oh, it has a weird scar. What is that stuff that does? Oh, oh. <laughs> Alrighty. So the main point of that exercise was just to show you can't eyeball this when looking for damage and maturity. Uh, this is a hands-on process. You're feeling for any soft rot, feeling for any breaks or major damage in the produce. It can't all be done by eye. So once you've finished sorting and grading your product, it is time to box it. Now, number ones, as we previously talked about, those are going to your wholesale buyers. So box presentation, box count, box weight, all that is extremely important. Uh, for our buyers, they ask for one and one ninth bushel wax lined box with inserts, and they require a weight of 35 pounds of squash, so plus the weight of the box as well. And presentation is key. Uniformity is key when you're boxing that up. You know, um, I've had grow growers tell me they've been handling them since seeds. The last thing they want to do is when they're boxing it is just kind of throw it in and the stems cut each other. That can cause damage. You know, the last thing I want is for a grower to hand off a box thinking it's a number one and it shows up to the buyer as a number two. So cut those stems. I urge you take the time nicely place it in the box for presentation, uh, they'll, they'll go a long way. Number twos are going to food banks, value producers, and to some wholesale buyers. Uh, presentation isn't as important, but cut those stems. You just don't want them cutting up against the squash and creating disease or something in the transportation. So now that we have everything graded, we have it sorted, and we put it in the box nicely with the stems cut, great presentation. We're hitting what the buyer wants. That's a weight count of 35 pounds or product count. Find out what it is from the buyer. Make sure you're hitting that. The very last step is to apply labels. So the very first label that you're going to apply is a PLU label. That's price lookup code uh, that wholesale buyers use to identify any produce. Uh, so here you can see that there are different labels for your organic and conventionally grown produce. Okay, so what you want to do is just apply one PLU label on the outside of the box. This will let the buyer know uh, what the product is. And then you'll want to supply them with enough labels for them to apply on every single butternut nut squash inside the box. Uh, it's always good to throw in extra PLU labels in case any get wet or damaged along the way. So with butternut nut squash, uh, our buyers at Appalachian Harvest are asking for a 12 to 24 count. So this could be up to some 30 stickers depending how many squash are inside your box. Okay, so the next label you'll want to apply is a point of origin label. This identifies where the product was graded and boxed. Uh, here you can see this was done at Appalachian Harvest. It also identifies whether the product is conventional or organic. And if it is organic, who certified it? <laughs> Lastly, we have our traceback code. So this lets the buyer trace back the product all the way to the exact field it was grown on. So looking at it, it looks like a bunch of numbers just in two rows, but those first four digits on the left, 1031, that is an assigned grower code uh, that we gave that particular grower. And then you can see the next three numbers are the Julian calendar day. So day 285 is October 12th. Dropping down to that second line, we can see that this was uh, harvested in the year 14. Those are the, that's the year. And then moving over, you see 0202. This is internal record keeping from the farmer, which identifies this was field number two and crop number two. So this label is incredibly important. This covers all traceability requirements through your GAP certification. Alrighty, so once that last label has been applied, let's just zoom on out here. Beautiful. This box has all three labels. It is ready to get placed on a pallet, wrapped, and sent to your buyer. You know, looking down at your number ones and your number twos, you may have more seconds than you would like. 
you know, typically I see first year growers, about 60% of their crop is number ones, about 30% of it is number twos, and the rest is pig feed. You know, my goal through these videos and the resources we provide is that you'll be able to increase your number ones uh, throughout the seasons. Uh, you know, take a look at the links we provide. We have some great information, some great publications by Virginia Tech, some great publications by Agricultural Extension below. Check those out. I'm hoping these videos help. And I hope you guys are having a successful year growing butternut squash. So stay tuned, stick with us, and I hope to see you next time.